The original Lauer Probe lens came out all the way back in 2018, and since then it has become a staple in our industry, being used across wildlife, commercials, music videos, and more. Well, today we are testing Lauer's long-awaited update to the Probe lens, the Pro 2B 24mm T8, but I'm going to call it the Probe 2 in this video as it's less of a mouthful. We sold so many of the original Probe lenses, and when Lauer showed us this updated version, we all got very excited as it looks to improve on it in several key ways. The original Probe lens was the world's first consumer-grade Probe lens. It was very well priced and that has helped make it incredibly popular and allowed loads of filmmakers and DPs to create images that would have cost much more to do before or create shots that might not have been possible. Since then, Lauer have released a Cine version of the Probe and the Peri Probe 2 at slightly different prices to each other. The Probe 2 comes in more expensive than the existing Probe systems, but given the improvements over them, I do think it will be justified for many users. So let's take a look at what they can do. We really wanted to put the Probe 2 through its paces, and for this we shot some coffee and our very own lens extraordinaire Gary's gorgeous Omega Speedmaster. We chose to shoot mainly in our studio, as this lens is going to be used a bunch for products and advertising work in these kind of environments. Though of course, it will also be used across other areas of filmmaking, like wildlife and film. For this shoot, we used a bunch of light to try and craft a nice image while also shooting at some higher frame rates with our Red V Raptor, and I think we achieved a nice balance without underexposing too much. For this, we had three Aperture 600 fixtures and a couple of other random fixtures dotted around doing different things. It all got very bright, so bright that I even popped on my sunglasses to help see. We also had the beautiful Cinetech Super Falcon Dolly 2 in the studio to shoot on, which is not only rock solid, but also an absolute pleasure to use. We had a few ideas for shots in our head, but a lot of these were very improvised while shooting. Overall, we are really happy with the results, even with the challenges that come with lighting such high t-stops, high frame rates, and close focuses. When we shot with the original probe, I remember thinking that it was a bit soft, but not with this lens. It's incredibly sharp, and the images are very clean from chromatic aberration. As the probe uses the same 24mm focal length as the previous probe, it means that you can get some very weird, unique wide angle macro shots with large depth of fields. One thing that we did notice during our testing was that the 35 degree module seems to have some kind of mat in the front lens group that seems to affect the image when shooting with the lens orientated to the side like this. We reported this back to Lauer and they have assured us that this is not going to be the case with the full production units that you'll be able to buy. We actually should have the lenses in stock now so if you want to buy your own Pro 2 or any other filmmaking or photography gear, head over to cvp.com where our experienced team is waiting to help you. This new lens has been designed for cinematography, unlike the original Pro, which was initially a stills lens. This new lens comes PL mount as standard, but it features a user interchangeable mount. This means that you can easily switch from the standard PL to any of the available mounts that Lauer offer. Lauer will be offering mounts for most common mirrorless and cinema cameras on the market, so no matter the camera you need to use the Probe 2 on, you will be able to natively. The lenses come with shims in case you need to adjust its back focus, which you will want to check if you swap out from PL to one of these other mounts. The Probe 2 have standard 0.8 pitch gears for controlling focus and iris with industry standard focusing kit. It has a focus throw of 150 degrees and an aperture throw of 50 degrees. The focus marks are tight, but better than the previous probes. The lens as a whole feels much more robust and well put together than the previous probe lenses. There are three different modules for the Probe 2, which you can swap the rear lens module between. A zero degree, which is similar to the original probe, it's a simple regular angle straight lens that can produce the regular, unique and interesting macro shots that you expect from a probe lens. Next is the 35 degree module, which also uses a straight barrel 
but angles the lens to give you a different perspective. Lastly is a 90 degree periscope design module, which I'm sure people are the most excited for. This lens looks a bit crazy on the front of your camera, and all three lenses are quite a bit larger than the previous probe lenses. These new 35 degree and periscope versions allow you to get very different shots from the regular probe. They made us all start thinking creatively on how to use them to get shots that we couldn't normally do. The periscope could be used to get shots lower to the ground and higher up easier, and can result in some very interesting perspectives. Each module is available separately as a lens, or you can buy a kit with all three in a single case with them each coming with a rear lens module. So they are really easy to switch between when shooting. Swapping modules is fairly easy. You just loosen off the screw here and then unscrew the module using this silver ring. You can then take the other modules and do the process in reverse to attach it. During our testing with them though, we didn't do this much as we had all three full lenses available. So switching between them like regular lenses was much faster to do. The Probe 2 has a maximum aperture of T8, which is a stop and two thirds faster than the previous Probe lenses. This is a massive difference, and I'm sure there are plenty of original Probe users that will be happy with this change. This is one of the key reasons why this lens is a good amount larger than the original one, but it's not massive by any stretch, especially considering it houses 34 elements in 25 groups. It can also be stopped down all the way to T40, but you will need a lot of light at this T-stop. The original probe was waterproof up to its USB port for powering the LED on the front of the lens. The Probe 2 has a longer, thicker barrel, which is waterproof up to 36.6 centimeters. This is clearly marked on the lens by this ring on the barrel here. The front element of the lens is much larger and no longer has a light ring on the front of it, which does make lighting some things challenging. This increased waterproof reach allows you to use the probe in deeper water over the regular probe. The new modules can be used to shoot in water in some really unique ways, such as half of the lens submerged in water with the other half sticking out, which was much harder to achieve with other probe lenses. We actually stuck it in some coffee and water and it performed really well. One thing I am not a massive fan of is the lens caps. They are nicely made, but they require a good amount of force to get off. With how long the lenses are, pulling them off while mounted to a camera feels a bit sketchy. They are also magnetic for some reason, and this could be why they're so hard to get off. One really cool feature of these lenses is the ability to rotate them. It's simple to do. Just loosen the three grub screws and rotate the lens into the position that you want, and then tie the screws back down. This means that you can easily adjust the orientation of your lens as you need to. I wish there was some kind of witness mark here though for different rotation amounts. Currently trying to realign the front of the lens back to its regular position or level is very challenging as you have to do it by eye. We use the Lauer logo on the top of the probe to align the lens back to normal, but it's not ideal. The grub screws on the blue ring can be quite hard to adjust on some PL mounts as well, so realigning and locking off on camera can be quite challenging. We wanted to see though how it would look to rotate the lens mid shot using some of these degree offset attachments, and it results in some really interesting imagery. It almost feels like a robotic camera movement when controlled, it's kind of crazy. The movements we did were all by hand, so we did smooth them out a little bit in Resolve with some stabilization. The Peri Probe can also be rotated, and it actually had a gear so you could do repeatable movements smoothly and consistently. I really wish that this was present on these new lenses, as it would have made the shots we got much easier and consistent, and the footage looks really interesting. The Probe 2 has a rated image circle of 43.2 millimeters which will cover plenty of full frame sensors, but may vignette on slightly larger ones. Across the lenses, you should be happy with their performance on full frame cameras. However, if you plan to run these on one of Res VistaVision sensors, you may run into some vignetting towards the corners when using the full width of the sensor. 8K 16x9 should work for most though, if you don't mind some light fall off in the corners. If you want to see exactly how the lenses cover your chosen camera and format, head over to our lens coverage and camera comparison tool link to which is in the description below. As you would expect, given it's a macro lens, there is some lens breathing across the lenses. But for the focus balls that you will most likely be doing with this style of lens, I don't think you're gonna notice it too much. The lenses have a close focus of four millimeters, which results in a two to one magnification. This is insanely close. So close that we found it really hard to light our chart tests. However, it performs well close to it which is good as I'm sure it's going to be used mainly focused this closely. 
We shot a lot of our creative footage at close focus and it looks fantastic. When it comes to bokeh, Lauer has done a good job of making all three attachments pretty similar. Wide open, we can see a good bit of texture to our out of focus highlights and a pretty defined edge to them with a slight bit of color. The shape is good, but not perfectly round anywhere in the frame wide open. At T16, we can see the 10 iris blades forming our highlights and similar character to wide open. Overall, I think the out of focus areas look pretty good here and it does roll off nicely when you're at close focus. A lens's flare characteristic is an incredibly subjective thing that some may like and some may not. For these examples, we grabbed a torch and blasted it down the barrel of each lens. We tried to keep the torch in the same position, but did move the camera as we changed the lenses slightly. All three lenses have a touch of barrel distortion, but it's quite minimal and shouldn't affect your imagery too much. Right, let's take a look at how sharp the lenses are. For this, we shot all three of the new probe lenses and a copy of Lau's Peri Pro. We matched the field of view by changing the distance of the camera on our slider. This became very challenging though when using the different degree attachment modules, but we matched them as best as we could. Starting with the zero degree probe, wide open, we can see some blooming across the frame, which goes as you stop down. This is a loan unit from Lauer that we haven't adjusted. Performance here could potentially be better if some time was taken by an optical engineer to realign the lens. There is a touch of CA in the corners, but this is very minimal. When stopped down, the lens really bites up in the center and the corners. If you want the best out of this lens, stopping down a bit makes a big difference. When compared to the original probe at the same T-stop, the new probe is so much better with much less CA and more overall contrast and sharpness. We actually had to move the position of the Peri Probe quite a bit as it has a much wider field of view compared to the new Probe 2 lenses. The 35 degree module performed quite similarly to the zero degree probe, whereas the Periscope for us was the best performing out of the bunch with the best performance wide open across the frame. Overall, the lenses perform well and they are a good improvement over their predecessors especially wide open, and even when both are stopped down to T16. From our testing, the lenses have a touch of CA, but it's incredibly low, and even with some very harsh lighting conditions, they performed really well. They are much cleaner compared to the older probe lenses. The lenses have a slight color shift between each other. The two degree module attachments are the closest in color, with the zero degree one being the most different, with a roughly two to 300 Kelvin difference between it and the other two lenses. This new probe system is going to be a massive upgrade for so many people who loved the original lenses. However, I do still think that the original ones have a position in the market. They are more affordable and will be better for certain setups, especially the Peri Probe. Optically, the Probe 2 is far better in every single way, but it is much larger in comparison, so it could limit how you use it over the other lenses. The Peri Probe also has a gear for rotating the front of the lens, which I really wish these lenses had. Though the Lauer Pro 2 is a worthy successor to its legendary predecessor. Its faster aperture, improved image quality, added versatility, robust design and uniqueness make it a joy to shoot with. And it sparked so much creativity in our office. Even people who work in the office who aren't in the creative department have been intrigued by it and suggested ideas of what you could shoot with it. They really are an excellent set of lenses and I'm incredibly excited to see what people come up with to shoot with them. Anyway, let us know what you think of the Lauer Probe 2 and if you have any further questions down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.